Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissHandLog.com. So, we're doing this power supply series where we're going to take the power from the cord, and we even talked a little bit about how the power gets to the cord, but we're going to talk about how it gets to the cord to the DC output to, say, an audio amplifier, for instance. So we kind of covered cord. Now this particular cord is one, obviously, I made. <laughs> I did not run the ground wire from the pin, just the hot neutral, okay? But what we're gonna talk about is what's at the other end of the cord before we go into the next phase, which, you know, be the bridge rectifier, uh, transformer, downstream, that kind of stuff. Um, what I have here is a switch and a fuse and a thermistor okay all right so the fuse we need a fuse right of course we need a fuse to protect ourselves this is a cartridge fuse it's inside this little guy you just turn it pops out the fuse um this one here's a ul underwriter underwriters laboratories uh listed type fuse 250 volts you can get a fast blow slow blow all kinds of fuses all kinds of ratings if you don't get a thermistor, you're going to have this big inrush current when you charge up, say, a capacitor bank, maybe as big as this big old boy. <clears throat> and look at that thing. So, you know, you want a big uh, power supply for maybe a linear, uh, linear power supply. Maybe that's the input to your linear power supply, or maybe you're going to make an audio amplifier or something else with a linear type design. Um, something where you have a bridge rectifier and capacitors. You know, bridge rectifier capacitors. Uh, something like that. These capacitors look like a short circuit when the current first hits them and it charges them up. And uh, you get this big inrush current, which, by the way, when you flip that switch, you're going to get a little arc inside that switch and that could actually weld the contacts depending on, especially a big old capacitor bank. Um, that's a, a thing where, you know, you flip the switch off and it didn't turn off because the contacts are welded together. Or they're so pitted that, you know, they start to get really noisy. So, you can protect your contacts. Whenever you're opening and breaking a circuit, you can get an arc. And with something, big old capacitors on there, it can be worse. So, the fuse has to be rated so that it doesn't blow, right? You don't want fuses blowing and, uh, and you know, every other time you turn on your switch, that's where this thermistor comes in. The thermistor will limit the current during an inrush and then it gets hot because it's resistance. And then the resistance drops to allow a current to flow more freely. And by then your capacitors are charged and you're okay. Now, of course, you can run into problems with that if by chance you turn off the switch and you turn it back on and the capacitors are drained and then they get charged again real quickly and this guy's still hot. Now that's if the capacitors can drain themselves fast enough and if you're gonna just turn it off and turn it back on at the right time. And you know, the chances of that occurring is much more reduced just using this guy. So just using this guy is going to help protect you a lot more than not having one at all. This is kind of a fuse coordination thing. So with this guy, it limits the current. So you don't need to have a fuse rated so high in current. Now you can rate this fuse more appropriately to protect your power amplifier. Okay. So it helps you do that. These fuses come with pretty much three main ratings. One is voltage. You gotta have enough volts that when it opens, it opens wide enough to break the current flow, okay? When the fuse first starts to melt, um, that's the first time frame, that, you know, in, in how fast the fuse opens. The fuse starts to melt, heats up, starts to melt, and then finally the current blows it open and the voltage, um, sits there in arcs until the arc gets big enough between the two melted elements that, you know, it opens your circuit. And that's why 
they have a voltage rating so they can do that. You never want to use a fuse made for a car, for instance, a 12 volt system in your audio system running off 115 volts, 120 volts. The other way around is okay. Use a higher rated voltage for say a 12 volt system, that's fine. I mean, you just that's kind of a minimum rating, the voltage. You want to have that rating to, uh, at least. If you're, if the voltage rating's above what you need, that's fine, that's okay. Um, the next rating's your current, like how fast it's gonna open, how, you know, fast blow, slow blow. Now, even a fast blow fuse um, in electronics is slow. That's still a lifetime. Um, I'm going to show you some curves, but it takes, they, they rated it in I squared T, okay? So that's kind of like power, right? I squared times R is power. So you just make R say equal to 1, and so now it's I squared T, because power times T is energy. But if you make R1, the equation becomes I squared T. So it's I squared time. And, uh, and it's a curve and it shows you you know how much current you can run before it finally opens and it's kind of surprising even a fast blow fuse so that's why um, they can handle big inrush currents but eventually they get fatigued and they will open and uh, you don't want that so uh, and also all the connectivity you know like your switches and just your wires and and also your capacitors themselves they don't want to have that big inrush current hit them like that uh, they don't really like that either. So, the misters, that's where it's at. And they're inexpensive. This one is a 22 millimeter SL22, and it's a 10 ohm. So it starts off at 10 ohms at room temperature, and then heats up to some small ohms. And I'll show you the curve on that. But, so, between those two guys, throw the switch, and you're limited your current. 10 ohms, that makes math pretty easy. If you have 120 volts and you have 10 ohms, then you get 12 amps. You get 12 amps in rush current, big deal. And then it heats up and heats up fairly quick, you know, within, you know, seconds probably, and then the current flows. So, so that's, that's that. That's your, that's, now we're getting right to where we're actually get. you know, we're gonna plug it into rectifier and do that next time, okay? Just trying to make these short, quick videos just to kind of walk you through. All right, uh, show you some curves, and then we'll. Hey, by the way, I'm going to show you something else too. So I went to Little Fuse, one of the, uh, you know, they make fuses, right? One of the big companies that make fuses. So I saw a cool diagram, and it's kind of interesting because it's following exactly what I want to walk you through. This is a great block diagram showing two different configurations for MOV or MOV slash gas tube protection. There's two diagrams there. It shows input power, fuse, MOV. We haven't talked about that yet. Metal oxide varistor, that's a protector for over voltage. And then here's your um, NTC. I call it a thermistor. It's uh, MTC is negative temperature coefficient. That that's why I say it negative temperature coefficient. So as it gets hot, the resistance goes down. And then you go through your transformer, your rectifier, your filter, and finally your regulator if you have a regulator. This one's pretty much the same thing except for they're showing a chassis ground with two MOVs going to. Um, Go underground uh, with your gas tube. That's going to be another video all by itself. The MOV and the gas tube. That'll be the next one, and then we'll power it up. All right, guys. Let me show you some curves, okay? All right. What I want to point out is this is a fast-acting fuse. It's a 3AG series. Well, you know, the 3AG type, 312, 318 series, but it's fast-acting. So I just want to show you how slow a fast-acting is. You know, these glass fuses you've all seen, right? Uh, you can either get them with leads or thon leads. One thing I want to point out is at 100% rating, so if you have a 
10 amp fuse, whatever, it'll run at 10 amps for four hours minimum without opening. So it's not like you're gonna get a 10 amp fuse close to 10 amps is gonna pop because at 135%, it's gonna run for an hour before it opens that maximum. It's gonna open within an hour, okay? Then 200%, if it's a 10 amp, it'll open within five seconds. If it's something bigger, 12 amp, it'll be 10 seconds. And if it's a big one, 35 amps, maybe 20 seconds. All right, so I wanna show you the agency approvals. You can see the approvals, so, you know, nice safe safety rated fuse, okay? We're gonna go down and look at an example, and I'm gonna show you how long it takes for one to open. Let's look at how, how th these columns are rated. There's the amp code, here's the amperage rating, voltage rating, and there's this interrupt rating. Uh, I, I mean, I'll talk about that in just a second. There's the resistance of the actual fuse element, and then here's the I squared T. This is an equation, and if you calculate, if you know your I, you can calculate T by dividing it from this number, okay? So this interrupt rating, so at 250 volts, you know, it, it'll interrupt 35 amps, or up to 10,000 amps at 125 volts. Uh, if you have an arc at 125 volts, even up to 10,000 amps, it'll still open up the fuse enough to open. But at 250 volts, it's reduced all the way down to 35 amps, which is still plenty for what we're looking at here, but that just gives you an idea of the voltage and current that can be interrupted with with the running. So just going from 125 volt to 250, it drops current quite a bit. See, 100 amps, 10,000 amps for, for these, okay? So this is from one and a quarter amp fuse down to three amp fuse. Okay, so just want to point out those things. Now, I want to show you how to use this I squared T thing. So what I want to look for, here's the I squared T column. Let's do our math easy so I don't have, we don't have to use a calculator. Let's, all right, so let's find a fuse that we can do math easy on. I squared T. All right, here's 50. Okay, so that's a nice round number. And that's a 5 amp fuse. So I squared T is equal to 50. So let's say we put 10 amps to this 5 amp fuse. That is, so I squared is 10 times 10 is 100. And we divide that into 50. So that would be 0.5. So 0.5 seconds, that fuse should open with 10 amps. Okay. Let's see if we're right, because they, they have this curve down here. Average time, current curves, time, and amps. Okay. So... Uh, 0.5 is down here, 1.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0 0.5, and 10 amps is right here. So, uh, what we can do is, here's 5 amps up here, the 5 amp fuse, and so that is, okay, we have, let's just find out which line it is. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, it's the 5th line up, so 5 lines up. Let's see where, here's 10 amps, this line right here. So let's see where this fifth line crosses 10 amps. One, two, three, four, five, right about there. So that is one amp here. So it's 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. It's about 0 0.7, I think. So it's pretty close to 0 0.5. So it's pretty close to that equation. Now, here's another thing just to be aware of, temperature. So you never really want to choose a fuse that's rated super close to what you need. They're also rated at 25C. And so that's 100% of rating right there. So at cold, like all the way down here at, well, let's just say 0C, 32 at freezing. At freezing, it goes up. See, that's 110%, so that's a few percentage points. So it only goes up a few percentage points at freezing. And then, let's say at hot, if you go all the way, uh, so as the fuse heats up, it's going to open sooner because it drops down to 
you know that's 90 percent there it drops down close to 90 percent so as it gets high it's it's gonna uh you know start to open sooner yeah these are all things just think about when you're but the point is is you know five amp fuse even at 10 amps takes a half a second roughly yeah just something to think about all right this is a thermistor it's an amptherm data sheet for sl22 series which is 20 the d is 22 di uh millimeters you know thickness right there it kind of talks about that six millimeters so this particular one is a 10 ohm so the part would look something like that sl22 and then over here it says 10 ohm okay um now it can run um have eight amps going through it steady state maximum at 65c 65c is too hot to touch it's pretty hot at eight amps and then they have joule ratings and this amperage rating if you need more than that you go to the next size bigger or another size bigger and they'll get larger diameter and also often thicker too and then they have this maximum capacitance rating and by the way don't worry about that if you want more than 6,000 microfarads in your say audio amplifier no problems because this is a 125 volts that's right after bridge rectifier let's say if you're going through uh, audio transformer maybe something like this okay so let's say you got 120 volts input and you're going down to 24 volts on the output so you're stepping the voltage down about five times so that means the current can go up five times so it means the capacitance can go basically up five times so this is 6,000 maybe go 30,000 microfarads okay and so that's a total so if you have two legs, then that might mean 15 microfarads per leg. 15,000 microfarads per leg. So when it gets hot at its max temperature, it'll drop all the way down to 0.1 ohm. That it drops, you know, 100 times basically, from 10 ohms down to 0.1. And if it's 50% temperature, then it's 0.2 roughly. So basically, you know, half as much or twice as much resistance um, and the time constant is 122 so what that means is it takes about two minutes for it to cool down completely after it's been heated up and the dissipation as far as milliwatts which kind of goes along with this joule rating joules is just watts per second I mean watts without time so if you calculate your current times your resistance That'll tell you how many watts, and then you can divide it by that. Because for every 32.4 milliwatts, you're going to go up one degree C. How hot it gets per, you know, how much energy you put in. So again, you go to bigger sizes, and that number goes down. All right, so that's thermistors.